In this video, we're gonna be building the OpenSea clone, but with a little bit of a twist, because this time we will actually watch ChatGPT build it using Infura to connect to the Ethereum blockchain. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, now AI is smart and all, but it's not as smart as everybody thinks it is. It still cannot set up the project for you. So while it can write the code for you, it can't set it up. So still, we're gonna need to run the CPCLI. So we just run it and then we'll get everything started, put in your name, email, and then open Chat GPT is the project we're going to be running. Now it opens Infura for you. Again, you are still in control. So if you don't have a Infura account already, just go ahead and make one and let's actually set it up. But before that, the terminal will finish running and it will open VS Code for you. That's where we're going to be putting everything ChatGPT spits at us. So you can go ahead, spin up the app. And in the meantime, just create a new API key. We're going to be using the Web3 API and then put in the name. However, you want to make sure that you are not putting any spaces in that project name. It could cause problems later and it's also just good practice not to do it. All right, let's go create that. So that's nice over there. We're going to get back to that in a little bit. There's your API key. There is your end, there are your endpoints and this is your app currently. So it already has connect MetaMask wallet and all that functionality included. So don't worry about that. We're just going to be specifically focusing on the contract part with ChatGPT. So let's move on to actually writing the contract. All right, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be a new one. So here's my chat GPT. And however, it's still like you got to be like super specific. So let me just show you an example. I just want to give you an idea of what kind of commands you can give to chat GPT. And as you can see, I'm using chat GPT four. That's like a little fast, little smarter. Actually, that's a slower. However, it's a $20 upgrade. But ChatGPT3, which is free and available for everybody at no charge, you can still do this exact same thing. Now, what you might experience is if you're using ChatGPT3, is that you want to have like tiny bite size prompt rather than longer prompts, because that can only process so much text. However, this app can be completely and 100% built with that. I just wanted to show it with this one this fits better on a screen and I can explain it better. So let me just show you. So here's what we're going to do. You want to type in something along the lines of create a Solidity Smart that uses ERC-729 for an open Zeppelin and name it NFT collection. Like you got to be specific with it. Give it a name. What exactly do you want it to have? So the URI storage ownable. You still have to understand the fundamentals of Solidity and coding in order to be able to use it. Now, we want to be using the counters as well, and we want the library that keeps track of the token IDs. And let me just freeze it here. Here we have 12 very specific commands that we want from this app. So again, if you're using GPT-3, you can just break it down to 12 separate prompts. It will be way faster. You can just do it that way. So we want to have a price of, the, of this NFT you have to specify you have to call it a constant otherwise it will not know what you want to do you want to have a struct so you still have to understand what's happening like you have to know almost if you were writing it so you need we need a struct that will contain all the data that will have two u and two five six bulls id and price you want to map though map that nft data or i'm sorry you want to map a number to the nft data meaning the id to the NFT data itself. We will need a constructor that will set the name and symbol, and you have to give it the values, so NFT collection and NFTC respectively. So basically the name will be NFT collection and NFTC will be the symbol. But again, it understands if you say respectively. <clears throat> then we will need a function set price that will receive the token ID and will receive the price is two arguments and then we'll check whether that token exists or not and then we'll set the price and we're going to have an N add nft which will increment the counter and then create the nft data object and then mint the token 
So it will basically generate all the, or it will basically do all the maintenance around mint. Then we're going to have a total supply that returns the number of minted tokens. Purchase NFT, which will complete a purchase transaction. Get all token URIs, return all the token URIs, and you name it. And then we will have the burn function from the inherited contract over overridden and a token URI as well. So let's see what ChatGPT said. And it actually gave a pretty long contract. So I'm not going to just go through it right now. Let's just put it into our VS code. So I'm going to go ahead, go into contract and create a NFT collection SOL file and then just paste it there. So what I recommend you do is whatever it gives you, just start pasting it back into your VS code and then just keep compiling the code that way. You don't have to do any of the understanding. And obviously if there's a bug, you obviously have to understand what's happening, but you don't have to do all the thinking and everything that is involved with coding itself. So what you can do is you just paste it and then just type in your terminal truffle compile, and that will check it for you. It will obviously compile it for you and it will spit any kind of errors or anything that you have. And that's when you start debugging. So there you go. This one was compiled perfectly. We don't even have to go through it. We just know it works. We know it has all the functionality. However, if you were a beginner in Solidity, I still recommend you go through the contract and try to understand what's what, pick it apart because that will serve you well. All right, let's move on to the next step. All right, so now let's deploy the contract. If you don't know how, you can ask ChatGPT or if you already know, you can just do it. So what we always do in the truffle extension, if you don't have it free from the VS code extension library, just go in there. You can disconnect all previous projects or just connect it as new ones. This is an infure service and it's so good how they are integrated because it just pops up all your projects. So you can just connect to open open ZD. and now you can go ahead and just click deploy and it will do everything for you. So there are all your networks use the mnemonic and there you go. Now it's deploying. So everything should be fine. And it looks like we are getting some positive results. There you go. Deploy succeeded. So that looks good. We can now copy the contract address and actually let's paste it into our listings JS. It will be useful later. So let's move on. All right, so in this one, we're going to be setting up the contract instance so that the app can work and interface with the contract. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to be using the listings JS file and we're actually going to be needing it. But let's just put it there in uh, line 20 that that's where we're going to set up the contract instance. This will help chat GPT to just kind of like work its way through this file because we're going to be giving it the entire thing. So here's what we're going to do. Put it there set up a contract instance and then just highlight everything, copy it and let's go over to Chrome. Now, what we want to do is we want to set up a contract instance for our contract state in the use effect and then just paste it there. So basically just tell it that, hey, there's this use effect. I want to interface with the contract and it will just figure out the rest. You can specify, oh, this is where I want it to be or you want to be, you can also just say that, hey, I want to interface with a Ethereum contract. Give me the code for it. Something along those lines. I want you to try it multiple ways. So you just have a muscle memory of like what to. All right, just paste the file there. Good to go. And let's see what it says. All right, so that looks good. Now we also have to make sure that we're importing the ABI and that obviously it doesn't know where it's at. So we'll have to figure that out but just you can paste that line there and then just update where the ABI is at. So now you obviously want to make sure that the location is correct. So for me, it's in the build slash contracts of NFT collection JSON. And now it also gave, also made this address constant. So that's nice. We can just replace our comment with that. So that's actually helpful that it did that. And now this is where, this is the moment of truth. This is where we're going to be copying over the use effect that it actually built for us. So that first use effect is, ladies and gentlemen, that is where everything happens. That's what we came here. 
So just go ahead, copy that entire thing. And if you can see over there, we just had an empty use effect. So it figured it all out, it put it there, that is perfect. And that should in theory work. So let's check it out. Now I wanna make sure that down there, everything is console logging all the errors. Otherwise we're never going to figure out what the issue is. And it looks like there's already an error and it looks like that it cannot find the map part in the ABI. So that looks interesting. And that's very likely because these ABI files usually have an ABI object in them. So I use that instead of the regular ABI file. And it looks like that just saved this whole thing. There you have it. All right. So now we're going to make ChatGPT build the add NFT function. So let's ask it to make it. So you can just say, okay, now let's do the add NFT function or something along those lines. Normally remembers if you gave it a bunch of things and it should in theory, remember the conversation you guys had before. Okay. That was weird to say, but in case it doesn't, you can also just again, give it to the entire file again and be like, Hey, there's the add NFT function make it so that it does this and so sometimes you need to refresh its memory all right let's see what it says so that looks good now let's go ahead and replace everything so we have something to put it put to the add nft function and we also have to replace the handle submit so it actually gave us two functions so that's nice now let's copy over the add nft to collection function so that's already there. You can just uh, replace it with whatever it gave you. Don't even worry about it. We'll check it in a little bit, whether it work, works or not. And uh, now let's check the handle submit function and just replace it there. Let's see what's happening. So open up the app. And now if everything goes well, technically we should be able to mint the NFT. So just paste your NFT URI. We already gave you all these things. So just from the metadata, just copy that, paste it there, and then that, and then just the price. So remember, because we asked ChatGPT to set a price for the minting, which is 0.001 ETH, you will have to pass in that value there. So just make sure what the value is. You can go back to your contract file and double check. So there's the MetaMask pop-up. So that looks good and it's actually pending and there's the add NFT function going through and it looks like it was actually successful. So let's fetch the NFTs. All right. So far it's been pretty smooth. Let's see if fetching these NFTs are going to confuse it. So let's just say, okay, now let's do the fetch NFT metadata function and let's see what it says. So that looks interesting. It looks like it cut in half. So sometimes it happens. So you can just say something along the lines of, okay, continue or whatever, carry on. And it will just continue or regenerate the response or whatever. <laughs> and it even apologizes. So that's nice. Okay. So that's looking good. Let's copy this code over to our VS code and replace the fetch NFT metadata function. So let's see if it works and it looks like the image is missing the source property okay now we're in like some deep trouble let's see what's happening and it also looks like that we are fetching the token uri which is not necessarily the good thing to do we should like extract the data out of it that's the issue it's not the token uri that we're looking for so we should be fetching not the object, we should be fetching the U, uh, the image URI and all these things from that object. So let's take a look at that. And by the way, we can just give it that, hey, this is how you build up the URL that will work for the image. So let's see. Okay, so that looks much better. If you take a look at it, in the previous response, in the previous response, we only had this stuff. So basically we just had the token URI and then it just passed it back here. And now that was pretty much it. Now in this one, what it does is it actually uses that same token URI right here as we gave it to it. And it actually fetches the metadata itself. And there you go. Now we have the metadata and we actually can do something with it. 
So like we can get so like we can get pretty lazy with this stuff and we can just make it do a lot of things. So we can just copy this over and you want to make sure that you highlight the entire thing and then just paste the new stuff there. You can just paste in the metadata fetching itself. So there's the metadata. So that looks good. However, we're looking for the image URL and, and you can see how it like fall, starts to poop out. It's not that smart, but it's pretty impressive that this is the first time that we are actually coding something and we have to use our brains. So that's pretty nuts. Now we have to like make sure it knows everything. Instead of metadata, we're going to have an image that we'll need to fa we'll need to get the image property from the metadata and same goes for the name because right now it doesn't show up but there you have it the image is there so that looks good so far but as i said the name is not there so we're going to extract that too and now it shows up and that's as much as fetching goes all right so the last tap is that we will enable the user to purchase these nfts so let's take a look at that let's make chatgpt do the work for us so you can just say, all right, now build the NFT or the purchase NFT function and it will spit an answer back at you. That looks good. Let's copy it over and then you can just paste it to the appropriate place. That looks promising. Let's, let's see what's up. And by the way, this app is built so that when you click the image, it will run that purchase NFT function. So let's click it. And uh, it looks like to be an error. And something along the lines of the value must be string and it got a big number. Let's just make the listing price a string. Usually that's the listing price because the way is a big number. So you just want to convert it to a string. That might not have been added there, but that's fine. And we can also remove that line from there. That's not really useful. We are not doing yeah it literally parses the price to ether and we don't want to work with that we want to work with a way that's how solidity works okay so that looks good okay that looks way better and now they are over there on line 53 just make sure the value is price not price in way otherwise you're going to have another error so now that we cleared it up and uh, fixed everything and again this is where it comes in that human power is still required and necessary more than ever so let's check it out now i'm gonna hit it and a metamask popped up so that looks good and purchase is pending and it looks like it just went through and now you can just go ahead mint new nfts purchase those nfts so that is pretty much the build you can just repeat this as much as you want to that's pretty much the build thank you so much for watching and now you should go ahead and practice learning you chat gpt this is a tool this is not there to replace you but you have to be able to use it you have to be able to increase your output using tools like chat gpt whether you use the model 3 or the model 4 it will just make you faster so with that said thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace